A new wave of cable consolidation came crashing ashore this week when Comcast made a surprise move to merge with Time Warner Cable. Comcast is already a giant, the number one cable company in the country. And if this deal is approved by the government, it'll take over the number two cable company and get even bigger. Here's what you need to understand about Comcast. It's unique because it doesn't just distribute other people's television channels. It also owns some of the channels itself, like NBC, Bravo, USA, MSNBC. And with this new merger, the fear is that Comcast will use its muscle to help out its own channels while hurting other channels you might want to watch. Opponents are already lining up. In fact, when this deal news broke on Wednesday night and I started scurrying trying to write a story for CNNMoney.com, my first email was to, Craig, it was to Craig Aaron. He's the CEO of the public interest group Free Press, because I knew he'd be shocked and, and probably appalled by the news. Sure enough, he was, and his group came out against the deal that very night. Craig joins me now from Washington to tell me why. Craig, you wrote uh, in a petition that's now up on Free Press's website that putting this much power in the hands of one company is dangerous. Why do you say that? Well, I think shocked and appalled is absolutely right, Brian. I, I think this deal, if it goes through, would give Comcast way too much power over what we watch, see, hear, read, and download every day. This would make Comcast a gatekeeper basically over all our forms of media and communication, giving them a lot of power to dictate the terms of the business, to decide what goes on the internet and what doesn't, certainly what goes on your cable system and what doesn't. Uh, and I think that's just too much power in the hands of one company that if this deal goes through would stretch uh, to more, nearly two thirds of American homes uh, would be offered service by the new giant Comcast. Let me play devil's advocate with you. If Comcast is so bad, why are 20 some million people subscribers to it uh, seemingly happily all across the country? Well, I don't know about happily because Comcast regularly ranks among the worst companies in surveys of customer service. But so the you're saying they just, they just have nobody to switch to, I guess. I am saying they're the only game in town. If you want high speed Internet in most of the country, your only choice is the local cable company. And for more and more Americans and maybe a lot more, that company is Comcast. Now, that doesn't mean that you know, people want to give up the Internet or don't want to be able to watch shows like this. They absolutely do. But it does mean that consumers don't have a lot of freedom. They don't have a lot of choice. If they're unhappy with a company, they have nowhere else to turn. You know, this big media world can, can feel awfully small sometimes. I think that's what you're getting at. Uh, the channel that we're on, CNN, is owned by Time Warner, which until 2009 also owned Time Warner Cable, which is now being bought by Comcast. And, you know, full disclosure here, my fiance, who I'm going to marry in a week, uh, works at Time Warner Cable. She'll be a Comcast employee if this deal goes through. It seems like there are, uh, this, these are companies that are so big, and I wonder if there are journalistic or other ethical questions that you think this brings up uh, when one company, in this case Comcast, owns so many news channels as well as entertainment channels. I, I do think there's real concerns uh, for people with Comcast having this much control. You know, they do uh, own and operate one of the biggest news operations there is, NBC and all of the NBC cable channels, as well as dozens and dozens of local television stations. And there's a lot of incentive for Comcast, if they could get away with it, to uh, give a leg up for their own content and services. That's true on the news side. That's true on the entertainment side. And now, now, Comcast, uh, you know, we asked them to, to come on this week. They declined. But I know what they would say here. They would say, uh, we haven't done any of that. We have been responsible corporate citizens ever since the NBC merger three years ago. Have you seen any evidence that contradicts that? Well, you know, I think content-wise, they've continued down the path. I think one question will be, you know, are MSNBC and, MSNBC and CNBC, are they going to cover this merger? Are they going to cover it critically? Well, you mentioned the Internet, and that's, that's the, maybe the most important part of this. You know, we're talking about television a lot here, but Comcast wants about to charge more and more for faster and faster Internet. Um, is that where the regulators in Washington should be, should be paying the most attention when they scrutinize this deal? I think so. I think at its core, this deal is really all about broadband Internet. That's the future. That's the market that Comcast is really trying to lock down with this deal. It's vastly profitable for them right now. And they know if they can position themselves as the gatekeepers online, everything in the future has to go through them. I think we have real concerns when really the only high-speed offering in many places is going to be that Comcast cable connection. Well, uh, you say that, but, you know, I've noticed on my AT&T phone, it's getting better and better and better. I can watch Netflix on my phone nowadays. Now, granted, it gobbles up a lot of data, a lot of bandwidth, but I wonder if Comcast feels it has to get more scale in order to compete with Verizon and AT&T, because in the future, those are going to be the big Internet providers. Well, these are all very vastly profitable companies, and I think you're right. I think they do see this as a play 
uh, for more scale. My concern is that what we're doing is we're essentially building a new cartel where the cable companies divide up their side of the market. It'll be almost entirely Comcast with a few other people way down the list. They're going to take your home internet connections, your wireline service. The phone companies are saying, okay, well, we're going to take the mobile market, and we, we'd like it if there were fewer than four of us. We've tried that, uh, but the big two are going to be dominant. And all of a sudden, as a consumer, you just have very few choices. And if they decide to start discriminating, if they decide to start blocking websites, you don't really have anywhere else to turn. I think that's the real danger here. And the one thing, and all the consumer benefits that Comcast has been touting about this merger, the one thing you never hear them say is that prices are going to go down. They're pretty clear that's not the case, that prices are going to keep going up. And if they can do it, they're going to go up pretty rapidly. That's, that's why I think all consumers should be very, very cautious and skeptical about what Comcast has proposed here. And it's understandable why there's been lots of talk about consumers and what it means for them. I think that's a good point. On that media conference call, I never heard anybody say prices are going to go down. So I think Washington needs to take a close look at this. Certainly that's what we're going to be advocating for. I'm sure Comcast will be spending lots of money to push their position. And they're very close to both parties in Washington. But this is certainly no slam dunk. And I think the more the public speaks out, gets involved, says, wait a minute, I don't like the cable guy very much. I really don't think I'm going to like the cable guy on steroids. Greg Aaron, thank you so much for being here and expressing your point of view on this. Thanks for having me, Brian.